day. We are here today with Cheryl McKinnon from Tiny Modernist. So excited. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> she's a Canadian designer. I'm sure you guys have seen her stuff. She's very prolific and always has lots of new designs. They're very modern. And um, she was an artist and a fashion designer before she got into cross stitch. So why don't you tell us about your journey and how you got into cross stitch and what kind of stuff you design for fashion? Sure. Um, so I started cross stitching as a child and um, I always really loved it. And um, it never occurred to me that it was something that I could design. Mm -hmm. um, and so after uh, after school, I went in, I went through fashion school and I worked for a few years in the industry. Um, after my first daughter was born, um, I started taking up cross stitch again and uh, I actually designed um, I had my own business for about five years doing fashion and I did little kids dresses and um, a lot of local locally made stuff. We did trunk shows here and there, uh, one of a kind show here in Toronto, things like that. Um, but all the while I was doing cross stitch on the side. It was just a sort of a hobby passion for me. And um, at one point, I think after about five years, I realized that really that was where my interest was. And, and I sort of phased out the fashion stuff and, and then just focused on cross stitch full time. And so that was in, I think, I think it was 2012 or 2013 about then. So it's 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 been just about 10 years or a little bit more than I've been doing uh, cross stitch full time. So. And what do you look forward to most at Nashville Needlework Market? Oh my gosh, it's so there's so much. I mean, I don't know. I could pare it down to one thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really I think the. The, the yearly event that we all look forward to, right? Because it's just bringing everybody in the industry together from the designers and the shops and the, the fabric dyers and the floss people. I mean, it's, you know, all the all the supplies that we, we, we do uh, for this stuff. Um, I mean, it's just, it's probably the most inspiring part of the year, I think for everybody, right? You get to see new things, talk with everybody. Um, you know, it's just rejuvenating, I think, right? We, we all get to see each other in person. Sometimes the only time we get to see anyone in person, right, is, mm -hmm. is there. Most of the time I design in my basement. So <laughs> so it's really nice to be out in person and, uh, and seeing everyone. So. How long is the flight from Canada to Nashville? You know, it's quite quick. The drive, on the other hand, I have done that, and it's about 12 hours, um, in, including sort of a couple of hours here and there at the border. But the flight, honestly, is only a couple hours from Toronto to, to Nashville, and it's an hour time difference, so it's not, it's not a massive uh, flight or anything. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so speaking of Nashville, um, can you do like a little trunk show and kind of show yeah. us um, what you have coming up? Absolutely, yeah. So I have six, um, well, six new designs, although I have a seventh one that's just exclusive through Yarn Tree. So I'll show you all of the stuff today. And uh, you guys are very lucky because I just I just got this stuff like finished yesterday. So <laughs> the announcements went out this morning. So the first one I have is called Spring Chicken. And all of these you can find on the Coming Soon page at Fat Quarter Shop. Click to be notified when they come in. So how big is that one? Uh, it's a uh, gosh this one is about I think five inches it's on it's on a Jobelin 28 count dusty green so it's 66 by 66 stitches um, so yeah I think just under five inches on on 14 count and uh, yeah just a fun color palette I really like how it pops on this green color mm -hmm. so that's it kind of goes along with the um, the other animals that I've been doing lately which, which all start with C it started with the cow and the cat and then last year I did a chameleon a um, crab and a crow so this this chicken is joining the lineup <laughs> That's funny. yeah um, i'm running out of sea animals so i don't know how many more they're going to be like that um, all right and then the next one is um follow your heart so this one is um uh, like the typewriter the vintage typewriter one of my favorite motifs and it's just a very fun floral kind of addition so these are um kind of a heart shape i don't know if you can see that or not but <laughs> And all of your designs are just basic cross stitches with back stitches and they all use DMC. Yep. So very simple, very, you know, it does yeah. look, you know, it has a touch of embroidery look, but it is just cross stitch and back stitch. Yeah. Yeah, it's all full cross stitches. I very rarely use uh, quarter stitches or, or half stitches. Um, so it's all full cross stitch and back stitch. And um, yeah, the, the odd time I do have 
specialty flosses, but I always included DMC conversion. So, you know, you have the option of using DMC, which is really easy to find and, and affordable compared to some of the other flosses. But I do like, uh, I do like over dyed looks as well. So this one is all DMC. The chicken was DMC. Um, yeah. So those two I should mention are Nashville exclusives. So they will um, only be available to, uh, to shops that uh, are attending Nashville until, uh, until May. So those two are only available through you guys and, and, uh, and other places. So um, the third exclusive I have um, just through Yarn Tree is going to be this this one here. So Love Grows Here. That one's so and, cute. Um, thank you. Yeah. So this one also, again, DMC. Um, it's on a Zweigart um, uh, green sapphire, I think is what it's called. And so Yarn Tree um, carries all of the, the supplies for it. Um, yeah, so there's that one. So those are the three exclusives. Um, that are coming out. And then I have some regular um, sort of March releases that will be coming out at, at market. So the first one is the this one here, which, which I'm calling We Should Be Friends. <laughs> really cute. Yeah, so that one's kind of, yeah, sort of a nice spring sampler kind of a feel. It's on a vintage country mocha. Um, so I, that's one of my favorite fabrics, actually. It's very versatile. I'm trying to get it straight. It's hard because I'm looking at myself backwards, I think. Um, so this one is six by eight on 28 count. And it's, um, I think a seven, what it be eight by 10 frame, I guess, yeah. And so it looks one. like on your patterns, you mostly frame them yourself without glass. Is that correct? Yeah, I do. Now, I guess the glass, the glass thing is for, for me personally, it's mostly for photography. And when I ship things to trunk shows, I don't want the glass to break. So a lot of the framing I do is without glass. Um, but I think, <laughs> can you hear my dog running around? Um, I think you could, do, you could do glass if there was like a mat, a mat in there just so it doesn't squish the, the stitches. But I tend to, f I do tend to f um, frame things without glass. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's kind yeah. of one of those things that my customers are always asking about, like, well, why? And so I always yeah. want to ask people because I think they're super interested in why different people do different things. Yeah. Well, mostly it's, as I said, because of the transportation. So I don't want the glass to break in transit. And um, for the photography, I don't want glare. Um, but, you know, it depends how you're going to be um, displaying things, right? If you if it's going to be getting dusty or whatever, you may want to have glass in it. But you also don't want to squish, squish your stitches. So I think you always need to have a, a mat or, or if you take it to a framing place, they can probably put little spacers, right? You just don't want to squish your stitching. Um, OK, so the next up is these little bunny pillows. These cute little guys. Let's see if I can get them up close. Yeah. So cute. See these little guys. <laughs> there they are. Yeah, so these little guys are just a really simple, um, like not a whole lot of stitching. So it's just the finishing, and it was pretty easy. I, I did it on a machine. And um, I include with the pattern some finishing instructions so you can walk through it. Um, so yeah, they're just fun little, fun little guys. They're about uh, three three by four inches big. And they're just on on 28 count even weave for the backing as well. I just use the same fabric on the back. So you could choose a beautiful like quilting cotton or if you want to get fancier with the fabric, but I just did it on the white. Um, yeah. Really cute. And I again, just all just whole, white, whole stitches. Just, yeah, I feel like the fabric sometimes from the back could come through to the front. Yeah, yeah. And there is there is fusing in there. So I fused um, the back of this this piece of fabric here just so you couldn't uh, so it's a plus see through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the white. It's just kind of simple and, and cute. Yeah, and really cute. Um, and what's last? Oh, oh, this one. I have a bigger one here. So I have, um, and which I'll be showing later, a series of trees, like large sort of decorative um, themed trees, I guess, which you may recognize. And I have a, the latest one. I've had a lot of requests for this for the last couple of years is, is Alice in Wonderland. And um, I think this is probably fairly anticipate oh, do i need to go back for you to see it Can yeah you see that looks thing? great and that's the one that i think we've got the most requests for <laughs> oh have you yeah there we go i'm backwards there yeah this one was really fun I, honestly i think out of the series this this is my favorite one so far i think because it's so bright and i mean it's such an endearing story too right all the and the motifs are so bright and fun it uses some really fun reds too like 608 and 606 like the really bright orangey reds um, so yeah, I really like this one, the Cheshire Cat at the top. <laughs> so, yeah, really cute. Yeah. <laughs> so that one, uh, so that basically fills out the um, the new March uh, stuff and Nashville stuff. But I do have a bunch of other things, unless you want to do some questions 
in between or I don't know what you yeah I say just start <laughs> showing your stuff uh, I do want to say okay. some of the questions people are going to ask are are your patterns in full color yeah so they are um so they they come like um like pale colors. so i'll show you just a close-up of like this kind of thing here so there's it's pale color with symbols um rather than just plain black and white symbols uh, you know that's kind of a preference thing for me um my older charts were a much darker color and i found sometimes it was hard to see the symbols so i switched to a, a pale color I, I i personally like stitching with that because then you can you get a sense for where the colors are, not just the symbols. So I find them easier to read that way. Um, and it's kind of in the middle too. So, so for anyone who prefers one or the other, this is kind of a good compromise. Um, yeah, so the charts really always nice come with a, with a color. They, they are, yeah. So a lot of the pieces, so they, they come in variety of sizes. A lot of them are just little folded cards. Um, just give you a quick peek inside there. Yeah, There's always a color key with DMC and anchor. Uh, it's over here. <laughs> DMC and anchor. Um, and then if there was a specialty floss in there as well, and it tells you the fabric that it is, I always have basic sort of instructions on the back. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a really nice card stock, full color, um, full color chart, I guess. And then the inside, as I said, as mentioned, is the light pale color stuff. So I do, I do try to make my charts pretty, you know, they're, people like to collect them and keep them and, you know, pass them along. So um, I like them to look pretty as well as, as be functional. <laughs> Yeah, I love um, that they're on that yeah. cardstock because they last longer and they're less, you yeah. know, they're just less likely to yeah. bend. Yes. And for me, I, I'm very conscious of how much plastic uh, we use. And so I, I do have some of my charts, especially the ones with multiple pieces of paper in plastic, but I, I do try to avoid it when I can, just, just as a slightly eco-conscious type of thing. So, I, you know, if they're strong enough to, to survive shipping and whatnot, then, then I feel like it's a little bit... Um, good for the environment too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. yeah, so um, yeah, so I'll move on to the, to the rest of the trees. So we saw the Alice in Wonderland. I'll show you the other three um, trees that I've done in the past. So the first one I'll go to is the Edgar Allan Poe tree, which came out um, a couple of years ago, just around um, Halloween, because it's kind of got a kind of a spooky feel to it. Um, but this is uh, based on like the Raven, I guess, so, you know, Nevermore. Um, uh, so we've got some fun little motifs. I love the polka dot and striped pumpkins. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about this one. So you see, there's a feather and a and a wait, where is it? The feather and quill here. I had originally designed this piece with a vintage typewriter. As I said, it's one of my favorite kinds of motifs. And then I thought, I'm not sure Edgar Allan Poe was alive uh, when typewriters were. So I, I, I looked it up, and sure enough, uh, he the typewriters hadn't been invented yet. So I, I had to switch it up to the quill and the pen. <laughs> And that so. fabric is uh, Stormy Gray 14 Count Ada by Fabric Flare. Yeah, uh, this one's this one's a linen actually. It's 28, 28 count, but it is it is stormy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is but it is Fabric Flare. And in fact, they offer it in all the different counts and fabrics, so you can get it in Ada if you prefer. Um, yeah. Yeah, Fabric Flare is um, is lovely. I do. I have several of my pieces that I'll show today on on Fabric Flare um, um, fabrics. Um, okay, so the next tree we've got is Wizard of Oz tree. And so this one came out, uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time getting things straight. There we go. Yeah, so this one came out another, a couple of years ago as well. So we've got all the, all the key characters in there. And I love the little um, uh, Emerald City there. <laughs> so I do try to make things kind of cute. Like I find my my you know my antagonist whatever here. She's she looks like a very friendly witch. She's not a very <laughs> she's not very scary. <laughs> so I do try to make everybody seem happy. <laughs> and that fabric is touch of blue, thirty two count mm -hmm. linen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the size difference. So the stitch count on all these trees is the same, but you'll see they're like side by side on twenty eight count versus thirty two count. So it's quite a bit different in terms of size. Um, but the chart, the chart sizes are, are exactly the same stitch count. It's just if you prefer something smaller. And do you stitch um, all your charts? I mean, do you stitch all your models? Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I did at the beginning, and then I, um, uh, you know, as you as you mentioned in the, in earlier, I do put out a lot of stuff, and so um, I have three good friends that stitch for me, sort of on a regular basis, and uh, I do stitch a number of my own models. Um, but usually, the really big ones uh, I'll outsource just because it's 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 time consuming, right? As we know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I know I do stitch 
a number of them, probably about 30 to 35 percent I still do myself. Um, and I mean, you know, I love stitching, right? That's why we're all in the industry. <laughs> we yeah. just love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want to give that up. But, I, you know, I do I do love the designing just as much or maybe even more, actually, because it's um, yeah, it's probably my favorite part. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then the last um, of the four trees is the, the original one, the Nutcracker tree. So this is the very first one I designed uh, for Christmas, I guess about two or three years ago. And um, this is also on a fabric flare. This is Aqua on Snow, 28 count, um, 28 count linen, I think. Yeah, it's linen. Yeah. And she always yeah, lists I'm... on the back the um, what fabric she stitched on the size mm -hmm. of the fabric, and then there's always a 14 count and 16 count design size on the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I have that chart actually, I can show you. Yeah, so the Nutcracker tree here, this is the chart for it. So it's a, a folding one, it opens up. This is eight, eight and a half by 11, so it's like a full piece of paper, folded in half, and then the, on the back, as Kimberly mentioned, yeah, you get all the design dimensions all the design dimensions, the fabric, the uh, the color key here, and also how many skeins to use as well. Sometimes if it's multiple skeins, it's handy to know um, up front, so you're not using different dye lots. Um, yeah, okay, so the next series I'm gonna show you are the terrariums. I have four of those as well. You can see two in the back there. Um, so I'll go with those first. Whoop. It's really throwing me off that I'm looking backwards at myself. <laughs> All right, so we've got the Valentine Terrarium. This one actually just came out last month. So it's the fourth, uh, the fourth design in this, in this uh, terrarium series. And so the terrarium itself is all the same dimensions. And then I've just adjusted all the insides and, uh, and little things floating around. So this one's the Valentine's one, which is quite cute. It's very pink and pretty. And is that finished oh, okay. on a fabric or a paper? That polka dot, is that fabric? It's fabric. Yeah, it's quilt. It's quilting cotton. Yeah. So it's actually just a flat fold. Um, and this, so what I would do typically, um, this is two. So it's, it's mat board with a um, quilting cotton on it. And then I use hot glue to, to wrap it around the back. And then I do it a second time for the contrasting fabric. And then I just, these are just ribbons. I, I quite like that. You can see the back, the back is kind of messy. So that's all stuck to the back. And then what I would do is put this onto like a board you know, like a wooden board or something. Um, or sometimes I take a frame if it's uh, if it's a little bit bigger and I'll put another piece of mat board on there and, and stick it into the frame so it kind of finishes off. Um, but I leave them like this mostly because I swap out seasonally. I'll swap out on each board. So like for the mouse series, I have one brown board that I just, I kind of swap each one out um, throughout the year. So you can save on costs, I guess, for, for the, your decor. And um, and again, for me, for traveling, like if these need to go to trunk shows and stuff, it's a lot easier to take uh, sort of unfinished, I guess. But, but yeah, to finish it off, I would add a frame or stick it onto a wooden board or something. Um, okay, so the next one is, oh, the Christmas terrarium. That's over here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go in reverse order to the way they were designed. So this one came out just at Christmas time. I love the Santa and the sleigh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that he's inside a bottle. It's funny. <laughs> and the <laughs> snowflakes. Yeah. yeah this is kind of cute. I always, uh, yeah, a little bunny and the mushrooms and stuff. I always like to do little little things. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And again, they're finished all the same way, just with different backing fabrics. But um, mat board, the quilting cotton, like the quilting uh batting I should say with the cotton and uh, just a lot of hot glue <laughs> and do you put batting um, on your piece and on the cotton or just on the one I do one you do both okay yeah no I do both yeah I have done it without and I find it's um I don't know it just looks kind of flat like the, the yeah. cotton batting just gives it a bit of a a nice kind of look to it I think you, you do a lot of similar finishes I think right yeah the um, batting the I feel thing. like if you put the batting it's less it's more forgiving you're less likely yeah. to see the mistakes or the creases. So I think batting is yeah. like, kind of like yeah. that little magic touch to yeah. fix the... No, I... Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's easier. To, yeah, I find it just easier to wrap around too. It's... Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I quite like that. So this is the uh, Halloween one with the... My favorite part is a little skeleton in the ground there. <laughs> um, and again, I wanted it to be sort of... Halloweeny, but not not you know it's more fun Halloween. It's not not scary or spooky. Although I do like this eyeball. Where is it? 
eyeball flower here. <laughs> and I did want to point out this one you stitched in Cosmo instead of DMC. I did, yeah. Actually, if you've ever had the chance to stitch with Cosmo, it's 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 really a lovely floss line. They have, I would say, almost their color selection. I think rivals DMCs in terms of the um, the sheer number of of solid like colors they have in their line and they also have a number of um over dyed floss as well so it's a it's a really beautiful line it's out of japan and i, and I think they've really pushed it in north america in the last couple of years i know um a few nashville's ago they were they were really trying to um encourage designers to uh, to start using it to try it and i think it's been quite successful i've noticed a few um uh sort of larger designers um, picking up the Cosmo line like there it's really quite a beautiful floss line yeah so. I think it's so yeah. nice to stitch with I feel like it's I feel mm -hmm. like they have better colors and I feel like I it like goes through the fabric easier it's just mm -hmm. more expensive and harder to get that's the downside so yeah yeah that that was and I, th I think that's getting a little better now but yeah it's mm -hmm. true it's not quite as universal as DMC right so um, well, we but yeah if you ever full, get yeah we sell the full set, oh, you, oh, and so you do. we sell more of that than the individual skeins. And I think it's because oh, the individual skeins, you know, they're not always in stock with my distributor, so it's easier. Okay. I order it direct from Japan, though. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's a lovely line if um, if people want to try it, and and like I said, it's it's very similar in terms of the colors to DMC, but they it's almost like they have more gradients. Like sometimes I find mm -hmm. DMC uh, will have three or four teals, let's say, and they'll have like seven teals in a range. So you, you, so you do get a lot more sort of subtle gradients if you want to uh, to use them. Um, okay, so the last the last terrarium is night terrarium. This was the original one kind of started it all. I, I never intend to have series. I, I usually start with a design and then if, if it, you know, if I like it and it turns out well, I think, oh, what, like, what else could I, could I do with this? So, um, yeah, this one was the first one and it didn't intend to be a series, but it's turned into one. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a fun one. I like playing with um, the scale of things, right? Like cross stitch really is, is kind of, um, fun for that, like this itty bitty house with the giant mushrooms. I mean, the big moth. I mean, it's just the the size and scale isn't realistic, but I just like how it kind of plays off each other. So, um, okay, so I guess we can move on to. Oh, I've got a couple of mice. Um, the mice series here. I'm showing two of them. There's actually about ten or eleven in the series, but I'll just show you the two. Well, I'll show you the newest one, um, which is this one, Strawberry Jam. This is Strawberry Jam. So this one and, just came out in January. And I, I wanted to ask, somebody had asked, are you going to keep doing more of these? It's not out of the question. I, um, it's just a matter of ideas. So I've okay. already done sort of all the major holidays and, and, and things that I can think of, like all the obvious kind of ones. Um, so I probably, you know, there may be another few mice in the, in the works. Um, it just sort of depends on, I've had lots of suggestions from people. I think their mouse series is quite popular and she's very cute. I mean, I'd love, I'd love to add more. So it's, it's prob probably going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. And this yeah, one's a really she's quick, fun. it's a quick stitch because it's only 59 yeah. by 59. So you could get that done yes. in one sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. I keep forgetting to add that. Um, and this one I've used uh, Weeks Dye Works. So a lot of the My Series used Weeks Dye Works floss. And um, that's how you get the, the gradation here. I did have somebody actually ask me uh, why there was only one symbol, but it was multiple colors in here. So I guess if you haven't used uh, hand dyed variegated floss, you, you know, before, but that's, that's the effect you get. So, but there's also, as I said, the DMC conversion in each chart as well. So if you prefer DMC, um, it would just end up being sort of just like a flat, a flat color here. <laughs> um, okay. And then the other mouse one I'm going to show you since it's Valentine's day is the Mouse's love letter, so their Valentine's one. And, yeah, uh, happy Valentine's, yes, everybody. I didn't even know it was Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> so yeah, I know it seems, yeah, it's a fun. So I thought, yeah, we'll show some. So I do have a couple of Valentine's uh, ones to show everyone. So, yeah, I need uh, to so run to, mice. Uh, I didn't realize it was already this late in February, so I need to run to the store to get my kids Valentine's gifts, because oh. I just had no idea. <laughs> It's true. Well, I can't believe it's already mid-February. I don't know. <laughs> I know. The year is just flying by. <laughs> um, all right. So what else have I got for you? Oh, the one behind me here, the Winter winter Traditions, which also just came out in January. So 
Um, there we go. Yeah, so this one, I wanted it to be, um, well, this is actually the second, I suppose, in a seasonal series that's starting. Uh, I had an autumn one come out last fall um, with similar placement. So it's the four houses and various things with a little a little saying in the middle. And um, and I wanted to kind of continue that. So it's all new houses and all new trees and everything like that. I, I, the the autumn quote um, uh, wasn't wasn't my own, but this one is my own because I, I couldn't find a good winter one. So I think the next three will probably be my own quotes. Um, so yeah kind of fun and I wanted it to be more wintry than Christmassy so there are there are a few um, lights and a little a little bit of red here and there but I, I tried not to make it overt um, Christmas so that it could hang up uh, throughout the winter um, yeah so there's that sampler this is on 32 count um, I want to say dark and it's yeah dark it's, it's a dark it's a dark dark cobblestone yeah that's it yeah perfect thank you yeah so there's that one um, and then, oh, and now I guess we're going into all the goddesses. So I've got four to show you. Um, and I'm going to, again, go sort of reverse orders to the way they were designed. So the most recent one is the Yule goddess. And so she's just come out um, last, uh, like for Christmas last year, for holidays last year. Um, so yeah, so all four are, are, you know, these lovely, beautiful ladies sort of in the middle. And then I've changed up all the motifs and dresses and things like that. So they're, they're, they're quite ornate. And uh, I would say that I stitched this one myself and the dress is probably the, the most stitching, especially all like the red to fill in all the red. But um, I think it's worth, it's worth it because it's quite, quite stunning when they're finished. Um, the fabric is, I don't know if you have it handy. I do have the chart here somewhere. It's grasshopper um, wheat. Oh, it's grasshopper. 30 count. That's right. And it's itched over yeah, to 30 count. I've never yeah. stitched on 30 count. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was it's an odd it's an odd color. I get there's an odd uh, count. I've had this piece of fabric from um, I picked it up in Nashville a few years ago, and I just loved the green. And I was having a really hard time finding anything that would go on it. Like it's sort of an unusual color, but um, but yeah, she works really well on it. Yeah, I really love it. It's kind of an olivey, like a bright olivey green. Um, yeah, and so she's got a bit of a sort of a Scandinavian flavor. And I was looking up actually like Nordic goddesses. Um, so she's kind of based on Freya, I guess, which is a sort of a, like a Scandinavian goddess with the white hair and the, the deer antlers and things like that. So she's, she's, a, little bit, she's a little bit Scandinavian meets um, like Mrs. Claus or, or like White Christmas, you know, those beautiful dresses they had in White Christmas. So that's kind of the, the inspiration there. And these goddesses are all the same size, so they're all 142 wide by 184 yeah. high. And I did want to say, yeah. um, if we cut off, we're going to join back up because we're on a, a time limit. So just keep talking, and then we'll do like a quick intermission and reconnect. So it's probably going to cut okay. you off in about eight minutes, but I would say just keep going. Okay. And But sure, I just don't perfect. want anybody yeah. to freak out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, so this was the Stitch Witch. So she's sort of the Halloween, uh, the Halloween one here. So she's got her fun, uh, you know, it's a little, you know, sort of Day of the Dead type of motif. So it's not exactly Halloween, but yeah. So the Halloween stuff and a little bit of a sampler. I threw some letters in there, and she's she's kind of fun. Uh, again, I like I like my witches to be pretty and happy, I guess. But. <laughs> But she's got the kind of grayish skin, so um, yeah. So that's her. And this is uh, that and, fabric uh, right there is beautiful yeah. beige by Witchell, and that is mm -hmm. such a great mm -hmm. color. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And it's really that fabric I think is pretty interesting. Based on the colors you put on it, it comes out with a different look. So that's a really mm. I think that's really interesting about that fabric. Yeah, it's one of my favorites actually. It's like almost like a go-to I find for any mm -hmm. anytime you need white. Um, it's it's tip, it's tricky to find a nice fabric that white will show up on, but also the, all the other colors too. So this one's a really nice one. Um, yeah. So then the third one, she came out um, in the summer last year, and that's the Bee Queen. So this is her here. Oh, I don't know where I can hold it so you can see all of her. Yeah. So she's fun. I've also seen it on blue, which looks really nice too. It's a bit more contrasting, and uh, yeah, she's she's lovely. So I've given her a beehive hairstyle. <laughs> And uh, again, like sort of mushrooms and different florals and things like that. So, and I guess her dress is more inspired by, um, um, well, it's, I guess it's not really historically accurate, but it's more like, a, um, I don't know, I want to say like Renaissance or Rococo type of, you know, the lacing and stuff, big skirts. 
Um, and that yeah, fabric and is the, oyster. The color is oyster. Oh, by Witchel. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I use a lot of witch elf fabrics as well. This there. And this is the original, the Stitch Goddess. So she was the first one. Again, it wasn't intending to be a series, but um, but I just like the uh, I like these ladies so so much. I thought, oh, I should do some more. So she was the original one. And uh, she's sort of a, you know, earthy, earth mother type goddess. And then, of course, we had to throw the stitching motifs in there. So she's she was the original. And I just yeah, she kind of reminds I, me of Rapunzel. Yeah, the beautiful hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so she was the original one. Um, yeah, so that's the four of those. And then what have we got? We actually we're just about through here. So I think I have uh, I only have five more to show. Um, so I guess oh, we'll do another Valentine's one. So here, this one's um, the Valentine signs. Yeah, I love so this one. of four. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love this and, one too. And this one, the board you're showing it on is different than the board that's mm -hmm. on the cover. So I think that's really, you know, it just shows how oh. it looks different on each. And you could stitch them all together yeah. with just one piece if you want it. Cheryl is, Cheryl that works for us is stitching this also. Not to be confused oh, is she? with oh. you, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is one of the examples. So what I do is when the season is over, I, all, all I do here is really I just put four little drops of hot glue on the back so they're sticking. I, I pop them off um, and I reuse the board. So I, I store these flat sort of in, in Ziploc bags sort of in my in my bins. Um, and that way I can, uh, you know, rather than having a million of these boards, I just have a couple and I can swap them out for, for different seasonal things. So that's probably why it's ending up on a different board than in the uh, than in the photo. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And they're all seventy one so. stitches by seventy one. And you have a mm -hmm. lot of mm -hmm. the sign series because I've I've stitched the Christmas signs. So there's more than um, just the yeah. Valentine signs if you're looking for something small. Yeah, yeah. There's a number of them. I think just about every every holiday, Halloween, and uh, some seasonal ones as well. Like I did a spring, summer, fall, and winter. So yeah, there's. There's a number of these. And it's true, they're good to stitch because you can do one or two of them if you want or put them together. Or I've seen people um, do them without the border and add their own little lacy finish or something like that. So there's there's lots of uh, options to, to, your, to customize, right? So yeah. Yeah. OK, so we're going to take um, a okay. quick intermission to reconnect sure. uh, with our technical issues. But what I want is our customers, y'all start popping your questions in so that when we get back, and we reconnect, then um, we will have enough questions. So just give us like five minutes okay. to, to fix everything. Perfect.
Okay, so we're back, and um, we're going to continue the trunk show. Thank you so much for letting us do the intermission. Uh, Cheryl's from Canada, so we have to do the connection just a little bit different um, than if it was just an American designer because of the international stuff. So we're going to continue with the trunk show, but thank you for being patient with the delay. So let's go back to the trunk show. All right, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I think we left off just uh, showing Valentine signs. So I'm going to pick up with the cat tapestry, which is a larger piece and uh, basically is a bunch of cats in a garden, <laughs> um, but it's sort of a tapestry uh, style with lots of different motifs and flowers and things. Um, and it's, it's a fun stitch as well. And it's all done with DMC as well. So it's, um, you know, it's nice big blocks of color. Um, it, would, it probably would look fun actually if you got some uh, different hand dyed flosses in here, but it's it's all DMC. Um, yeah, and so the uh, I know I'll see what fabric is on here. So it's, it's done on, on um, twenty eight so count water lily linen yeah. by Witchell. Yeah, which is Witchell. Yeah, over two, and so it's a uh, eleven by fourteen um, on fourteen count. Um, and this is a 12 by 16 frame. So I do try to make a lot of my designs fit into standard photo frames that you can that you can purchase um, if you want to do your own framing or certainly um, professional framing is always nice as well. So it's, it's good. I do a lot of my um, larger pieces. I'll have them professionally framed. It's, it's harder to frame uh, larger pieces. Um, so there's the cat tapestry. And then, um, oh, I've got a little one here. So the spooky teapot, just a little a little one. Um, this fabric is 32 count tumbleweed linen by Witchell. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And this one's uh, small. It finishes at about, you know, mm -hmm. five or six inches square, depending on the fabric you use. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little stitch. And I wanted it to be sort of an autumn with a little like a touch of Halloween, but not overt. Um, so, yeah, so it's got pumpkins instead of jack-o'-lanterns. It does have the little uh, ghost coming out of the teapot, but um, yeah, so it's a fun one. And the moth on the uh, the teapot there. Um, yeah, so I've just got two, the last two. So um, this is Stitcher's Heart. So this is a like a pillow finish. I love that finish. Um, so this, did you tell us how oh, you got the the out, how do you got those attached? Oh, so so yeah, so this is so after I finished stitching the, the piece, I cut out the heart. The back is a um, like a gingham cotton. So it's just two pieces. And then what I did was I sandwiched these. This is actually like a tassel trim that I picked up at a fabric shop. So it's it's actually got a piece of um, uh, like it's kind of like lacy bit. So they're all attached. It's one long string, almost like a pom pom finish or something like that. And so I actually just sandwiched this in between the two pieces when I stitched it. So when I flipped it inside out or right side out, I guess this was this was here. So yeah, so I didn't stitch them on individually or anything. It's, it was one big piece of trim. Yeah, that's really cute. Yeah, yeah. And that fabric is yeah. Panatone by Roxy Floss Company 32 count linen. Yeah, so Roxy Floss is actually a Canadian company um, in London, Ontario, so not far from me. So this piece was actually an exclusive for Stitch North, which is a um, uh, like a retreat here that happens in Canada once a year. And um, this was an exclusive piece for that. So the floss and fabric uses, um, I guess, a Canadian designer as well, Canadian uh, dyer. So, but it, it does have the um, the DMC conversion as well. Yeah, it's it's actually a little. Well, the color is actually close to vintage country mocha, I think, actually. Maybe a little bit more um, with a bit like of a mushroom color, but yeah. 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 So, yeah, I really like I've, the little yeah, motifs on I wanted to look. Company, so. Yeah, they, it used to be Leo and Roxy, and that, yeah, now it's just Roxy Floss. And uh, it's a beautiful line. It's, um, it's sold through um, a, a Canadian retailer here, so I don't know how easy it is to get in the US, but, um, but it is available. So, yeah. So that, and then I guess just one last one, which is the garden hair. And this came out, um, this was an exclusive for Nashville last year, and now it's available everywhere. Um, so this is the garden hair here. And I wanted it to be sort of um, like a spring, a spring feel rather than just Easter. So it's more for spring, I guess, although it has the, the bunny in it. And, and again, I like to play with the, um, the scale of things. So it's like a ginormous bunny with a tiny little house and things. <laughs> 
And this one is uh, do is the color, Charles Craft is the fabric, and it's 14 mm -hmm. count. And so that's actually just a printed fabric that looks hand dyed. Yeah. Yeah, it's I guess the Charles Craft and DMC line, they have a number that are um, a number of fabrics that are sort of printed and uh, they're quite they're quite pretty. Mm -hmm. So and again, it's just on Ada. So a lot of the stuff I do is on linen. But, you know, Ada is just a nice it's a nice stitch, right? It's, um, you know, it looks pretty. So yeah, yeah. I always tell so people I think that, stitch on whatever you enjoy stitching on. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we're well, I think to, that just about rounds everything up. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're going to move to questions. But what I wanted to do is remind everyone that if you order $50 or more today at Fat Quarter Shop, it's the last day to receive the free mystery Valentine Day cross stitch grab mm. bag. You have to use the coupon code that Jordan just put on the screen. And that will run when it runs out, it runs out. So I don't know how low we are on that. And then we're going to move to questions because there are a ton of questions that came in. Are there? <laughs> yeah, okay, one good. of them was the Christmas terrarium. They want to know what fabric this yeah. is on, and it's oh, um, sure. twenty-eight count linen chalkboard black. Yeah, that's actually a really beautiful fabric. It's it says chalkboard black, but it's more of a charcoal gray, and it's mm -hmm. one of my go-to's for when I do anything on a dark fabric. It's mm -hmm. slightly. It's slightly easier to stitch on, I think, than a true black fabric, mm -hmm. although I like black Ada as well. Um, but I, I, I recommend that for any kind of dark fabrics you, you use. Yeah, yeah it's a nice Yeah, one. and I use the chocolate oh, black Ada a lot. And it's so funny because the yeah. linen is darker than the Ada. So even though... Oh, is it really? Same, yeah, so oh. they don't even look the same. So it's, it's funny to see that. Oh, interesting. It's true. Different colors. I've noticed that different types of fabrics, they take dye differently, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So there you go. You can customize your piece just even based on the fabric you choose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Donna wants to know which one of your designs has been the most challenging to stitch or design? Oh, uh, challenging to stitch. Ditch. I mean, I guess, I guess in terms of just, it would be probably more the size than anything. I've had a couple of really big pieces that are just, I mean, actually I didn't mention it, but there's the one behind me here, the big oh, tarot yeah. one. That, that's my, I, I guess I could quickly mention it, but that one is probably the, not probably, it is the biggest piece I've ever designed so far. It's 21 inches by 24 inches. Um, I'm, I'm actually not even stitching it personally. It would be too daunting for me <laughs> to stitch it. So I have a, a close friend of mine is, who's doing it, and she's she's amazing. She has a you know big scroll frame, and so I think technically it's probably the bigger the bigger ones because you end up having to. Um, I, I think it makes sense to have a scroll frame or something, right? If you're going to floor stand type of thing, if you're doing big pieces. Um, so yeah, I do use a Q snap and things like that. So for smaller pieces, I can I can usually hold it. Um, but yeah, so technically that's probably. It would be the size wise. And then there's a couple other bigger pieces that um, over the years, one was Words to Live By, and that was, mm -hmm. I think, 18 by 18 inches. That was a big one. Also on black. So it, so really, that's a bit more challenging, too. I stitched that one myself. Um, stitching on darker fabrics, I think, can be more of a challenge than, than lighter mm -hmm. sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's a few little tricks, right? Proper lighting. And I usually make sure there's some kind of, if you're really having a hard time, you put your paper underneath so you can see a bit of white showing through, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, How many yeah. more parts are left in the tarot series? Because we did get that question now that you're talking about that series. Yeah, I can. I'll, well, you know what? I'll just show it. So okay. it's just started. And in fact, you're getting a bit of a sneak peek because only the first part has come out. So this, I'm not gonna be able to fit myself on here. So so this is a sneak peek because this these two um, ones here are coming out at, at the beginning of the next month. So these are the pieces that um, haven't been released yet. So I'm doing two at a time. So the border you can get as a free download on my website as a PDF. I'll tell you the reason I did that, um, mostly is for keeping costs down for everyone because if I had to ship out all the paper, like it's about 10 pages of border um, chart. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's really a cost thing. It's easier to have it available there and then you can pick up the, the charts with each little individual pieces at, at shops. Um, and that's just to keep it affordable for people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so the, the Magician and the Seeker have come out, the Priestess and the Empress are coming out um, in the first of March. And then it's a, an 11 part series. So after March, there'll be another nine parts. So all these empty boxes will be filled. And I did want to say that it's the design itself. I wanted to be really cute and and accessible. And so a number of the um, a number of the titles, I guess, of the of the the cards I changed. Like I'm not I'm not personally a fan of like the death card and the the devil card. So I've changed those to something more cute and appropriate for stitchers. You'll, I think you'll find it's a lot more. Um, 
it's a lot more accessible, I think, with with the cute things that I've come up with. So, and there's there where we've got two more there, but they're hidden. <laughs> and the fabric. Tell everybody so, yeah. what fabric that is. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually a custom fabric. So it's a fabric flare one. And they did a, a custom piece for me. I really like their stone dyed fabric. The stone dyed one you saw with the uh, the typewriter, the new exclusive, that was a stone dyed fabric. And I loved it, but it's just it's just not dark enough to show all the colors I had in here, the whites especially. And so I had them darken it up and they have it available um, for shops to carry and through their website. It's called Tiny Modernist Dark Stone. So okay. it's a custom fabric that they have uh, on their site. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. And it is, I can say it's a bit of an investment piece because it's, as I said, it's so large. Yeah, big. You, you have to, you, yeah, you do have to put, put a bit of money into the, the fabric and supplies, although it is DMC. So um, there's that. And it's a full year. So I think anyone who wants to join, you know, you're getting, you're getting a full, full year of, of stitching out of it. So, um, and then a beautiful piece to, to have afterwards. So um, I think too, uh, my original idea was actually to have these separate as little cards. Um, okay. And then I thought, uh, yeah, so if somebody's looking to do that instead, you could do that um, and finish them separately, maybe on perforated paper or uh, do a flat finish like how we, we had earlier. Mm -hmm. So there's that as well if you don't want to invest in a huge um, piece of fabric or a huge number of, you know, m amount of stitching. So, yeah. So I guess it would be, well, 10, 10 more pieces coming out, um, you know, with, with that one as of March. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and so we're going to order that fabric. So it's called Dark Stone, and so we'll order it yeah. today for everybody. Yeah, Tiny Modern is Dark Stone. Yeah, they, they like to put my name in it. <laughs> so, yeah. Have yeah. You and ever, it's a big piece. It, it, so, yeah. It's yeah, a big sorry. piece. How um, Have you ever stitched on the Cosmo fabric with their thread? Someone's asking if you have. Oh, I haven't used their fabric. Um, I've used their floss a number of times, and I think we spoke earlier about how, how lovely it is to use. Um, very comparable in terms of colors to DMC, but I, I found, I think you mentioned, Kimberly, it's almost like a slightly smoother mm -hmm. um, stitch. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit um, silkier a little bit, even though it's still cotton and still six strands. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't had a chance to use their fabric, so I'm, I'm curious if anyone's used it. It's, uh, I, do, I actually do have some. They sent me a few samples of different Adas and things like that, but um, all just in a kind of a beige color, so I haven't had the chance to use it. Can you talk about your design process? Like, do you sketch? Do you use a computer? Like, um, yeah, how do you definitely. physically do that? Yeah, yeah. So I can, I can show you my little sketchbook. So my sketches are really rough. This is the Alice in Wonderland sketch. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it, they're very rough. Screen so she, everybody can see. There you go. Oh, can you see it? Yeah. 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 So it's, um, so yeah, usually I kind of jot out what I want to have, you know, the, the placement of things, what's, it, you know, what's going on sort of in my head, and then I have an idea of it. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll flesh it out a little bit further. Um, although these ones, because it was the fourth in the series, I had a pretty good idea. Like I've already had the, I already had the base tree bits dot designed I, I just had to change all the, the people and things um so yeah so I, I i put this into usually like after i have a sketch i'll put that into max stitch that's what i work in and you can underlay uh images under the grid and so i'll do that usually with my sketch um so yeah so i do start with sort of rough sketches to kind of plot out my ideas and then um as i said sometimes i do more sketching or sometimes it's 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 working from a series so for this one i just went right into max stitch and um um yeah and then i use visual references as well like i went back to um images from the original book like the alice in wonderland book to kind of draw inspiration from the you know the for the um tweedledee and tweedledum like um little guys and then i always try to make things a little bit more my own my own style so I'm just trying to find where i put it we can show you again yeah how many hours so, yeah, a day so then, do you think you design Okay, Jordan, go back. Yeah. How many hours <laughs> yeah. a week do you, so you can see from design? Yeah. A lot. So this is a full time job for me. I'm I'm working. Um, I would say at least forty hours a week, and I don't I don't count stitching time as as working really because, you know, we just it's fun, right? You get to stitch stitch while you're watching movies or listening to podcasts and things. But in terms of the actual design. Um, you know, with everything, like you wear a lot of different hats as a designer, right? And as a as a kind of a 
you know, it's really, it's just, it's just me. Like I'm, I, I have some help, as I said, for model stitchers, but otherwise everything else is, is me. So a lot of times I'm shipping or doing invoicing or, um, you know, running out to the printing place to pick up stuff or, you know, dropping supplies off at the model stitchers and, you know, packing, you know, packing charts. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of other business related things that have to happen. Mm -hmm. So design wise, maybe 20% percent. Now into my own stuff that I wrote, I do a lot of work for different publications. And so a lot of my work appears in UK magazines. I do work for um, different um, sort of US-based publications. And um, so, so there, that, that, that is more design work, I guess, that goes to those companies. And they, they are basically buying the design from me. I don't have to stitch the models or things like that. So that does add to the design time. And, um, and, I, and I actually feel very fortunate to be able to, um, to spend my time, you know, essentially creating artwork for people. It's, it's really amazing. <laughs> What do you think yeah. your favorite holiday to design for is? I'd have to say Halloween. It's one of my favorites, I think, because it's just slightly outside of the box. You know, the rest of the year, um, you know, we, we have beautiful, pretty sort of things. But Halloween is kind of an opportunity to get a little bit, you know, spookier. Right. And um, and so I, I quite like the and the colors. And, uh, um, and it, usually when I start. Like, like my series, I'll normally have um, stitch alongs throughout the year. And I always start with the Halloween one. It's always sort of my my starting point for mm -hmm. a new stitch along. And then I'll do Christmas and then perhaps, uh, you know, spring or Easter or summer or something like that. But Halloween's always my starting point for those things. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, my husband loves Halloween. It drives me <laughs> <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> Last year, I tricked him, and I, like, did all the decorating. Well, he, and I did it all fall, and I left all the... Halloween off and like the week before Halloween oh. I finally asked him did you notice and he said yeah I noticed oh. but I was too lazy to go back oh. <laughs> and find all this stuff oh <laughs> so it was so funny but I, I'm sure that's not going to work next year he's he's going to have realized yeah, what he'll, he'll be is. on to you <laughs> that's funny do you have a go-to like color palette or colors um like you know certain DMC colors that you really use yeah. um more you know more often than not yeah, I, I would. Um, I would say I do. So there. So what I yeah, I'm not going to list them off or anything, but I do have favorite greens and teals and, and usually the brighter colors. Um, and in a piece, for the most part, what I would do is um, I have kind of like base colors, right? So you end up with a lot of sort of grays and taupes and yellows and kind of things. And then I like to add pops of color like the chicken is a good example um, where um, so I can get it. So the chicken is really a lot of beiges and, and grays, right? And then I, I put together kind of an unusual um, pop of color with the with the plum, you know, and then actually a couple of my go to ones are these uh, they're, they're like the salmon color. So it's like 350 to 353. These these like orangey salmon kind of coral colors. I love those. I, I use those a lot. And then this one, I think it's seven, it's seven, eight uh, anyway, this one of the plums, and uh, so it kind of adds a pop of color. So I do, I do like to have kind of a neutral, sort of um, uh, base for the color, and then and then sort of add like pops, unusual pops of color for the palette. So, yeah. And then Maria would like you to talk about some of your year-long projects. And um, I know right now you're doing the tarot stitch along. Maybe talk mm -hmm. about, I know on your website, if you go to tinymodernist.com and you look, it has all your past stitch alongs and all the info. But mm -hmm. I thought you should, you know, maybe mm -hmm. people don't know that about your designs and maybe sure. you could talk a little bit about it. Sure. So yeah, so stitch alongs, I started in 2017 with my very first, it was a very tiny Halloween one. And I wasn't really sure uh, how it was going to go. Um, and so it's, they've been sort of growing in size and popularity really ever since then. Um, and uh, I typically do one big piece as a year long stitch along. So as I said, this tarot one is by far the largest like physically largest piece I've designed. Um, but there's the words to live by, which I mentioned, and it was uh, 2019, I guess, was the was that one. And it was a big 13 piece. Uh, it's, it's quite lovely, actually. It's a big black um, background with a central motif. And uh, each little section has uh, um, like a inspirational quote type of thing in it. So it's, it's quite a fun thing. And I've seen people pull out just the one one quote if they wanted to do or or they can do the whole thing. It's I, I like my pieces to be quite versatile in terms of the way people can use them or finish them. 
um, some other year long ones. Oh, a nice one I did in 2020 was every season. And so it's, um, it's quite a pretty one. It's got uh, a little full coverage. Um, I don't normally do full coverage, but in this case, it was like a white border and each little section had a full coverage piece. So it wasn't uh, uh, entirely, you know, full coverage. It was just a nice sort of little chunk of color um, for each season. And that had a little motif and a central uh, phrase. Um, so there's that one. I'm trying to think of what else. Gosh, what else have I done? Um, yeah, so usually the year long pieces are a little bit bigger. I like to, I like to make sure, um, you know, you're getting your money's worth and you're getting a full year of stitching, you know, for these pieces. So they're usually a little larger. And then the, uh, usually the seasonal ones that, that kind of run concurrently through the year are a bit more manageable um, in terms of the size, mostly so that you can get it done for the season, right? So I want to be able to, um, so the Halloween one, if it's a four part, I start in July. Um, and they come out monthly. So by the time you get to October, hopefully you'll have a chance to finish um, finish the piece if you've if you've managed to keep up. And then there's no real. Uh, the one I'm using isn't. That. Yeah, so it's not opalescent, but they I think they can. Uh, it's it was the Nutcracker tree, and I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is the Nutcracker tree. This is on the Aqua on Snow. It, this this one is not opalescent, but I correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe on Fabric Flare's website they offer an opalescent. Um, option. So on their website or, or through a retailer, if you were requesting it, um, you can choose from a number of different fabrics and then they, they print it on that. So they may have an opalescent version available. And I know it's linen and, and um, uh, different counts as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, this one's not, it's just, uh, it's just a linen. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just has a, like a shine from, from uh, my lights or something, but. And then the bunny pillows and all the national oh, yeah. releases, when will those be available? Yeah. yeah, so there's the bunny pillows again. Um, so the all seven will be out as of March 1st and or when Nashville is happening, which is that weekend. Um, there's two, actually three that I showed you, which will be exclusive to, to like you guys will have them for sure, the exclusives. Um, and anyone who's attended the show can have the three. So the chicken is an exclusive, uh, the uh, the typewriter one is an exclusive, um, and the love grows here is an exclusive. So those will only be available to shops that have come to Nashville. And, um, and then uh, everything else will be available, um, I guess, to, to anyone to any shop as of March first. So yeah, May first. So, sorry, the, the the March releases. There was four March oh, yeah, releases yeah, yeah, yeah. that will be available, yeah. and then yeah. and then the exclusive. Yeah, and then there's three exclusives which only Nashville attendees can can purchase and sell until May. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Linda wants to know what kind of dog you have. Oh yeah. So I Do have. You want to show a, her? He's a lovely boy. I I don't know if I have. Um, I can maybe try to show you some photos, but he's a black lab. Um, He's a Labernese, so he's about 110 pounds. He's all black. He's got a little like white on his chest. He's a really sweet, he's got these beautiful golden eyes. Yeah, he's a real sweet boy. He's about three years old. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's really sweet. His name is Bailey. <laughs> he's a sweetie. Yeah, yeah, he's sweet. Um, I'll see if I can pull up a photo. I don't know how well they're gonna show up on, on Zoom, but. Um, I think it'll show. Yeah. I can't imagine having a dog that big. My dog like literally sleeps like wherever I am. He sleeps on my back, like right next to me. I oh. can't even imagine. Sometimes I have to like get up and like physically move him in the middle of the night so that I can get back oh. to bed. <laughs> Here, I have a funny one. So I have also a little cat. So this is my dog looking at my cat drinking water from his bowl. Oh, she's a, that's hilarious. She's a funny one. Yeah, yeah. He's not sure what to make of that. But yeah, he's, he's a real sweet boy. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's, he's, he's big. He's quite a big, big guy. But yeah, so he's a Labernese. And then the cat, we only just got her actually a few months ago. She was, um, because we live out in the country, uh, my neighbor had this cat show up in their barn and they weren't sure she was going to manage through the winter. And so we, we adopted her. So she's, Aww. she's had some health issues, but we're working through them. <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with the business name Tiny Modernist? Mm -hmm. So interestingly, the as I mentioned earlier, the the, fa the fashion stuff was first. And so it was actually uh, my idea was to start a because I just had my first daughter. My idea was to start a fashion company making little toddler dresses. And so Tiny Modernist was kind of from that. It was um, mm -hmm. uh, because I was influenced a lot by mid-century, you know, modern kind of dresses and things like that. So it was the Tiny Modernist was, I guess, 
the little girl that would wear the dresses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it actually worked when I switched over to fat to, to the cross stitch stuff because it was um, also modern inspired and tiny stitches. And so I just, you know, I just kept the name. It worked, it worked out. <laughs> And then let everybody know how they can find you on like your website, mm -hmm. your blog, all your social medias. Sure. So Tiny Modernist, I'm just on there as everything. So tinymodernist.com is my main website, although I do have an Etsy shop as well. Um, but you'll find everything sort of in the web, the main website. And on all my socials, I'm on Instagram, Facebook as Tiny Modernist. Um, so basically, you can just Google that and, and everything pops up. <laughs> So. And she does have a YouTube channel that does have some finishing I tutorials do. that you can check out, yes. especially if you want to make one of those, like, I don't know how you say, biscorny or yeah. like a little, yeah, I yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. I've watched that. Yeah, 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 thank you. I, for, but I do, yeah, I do. And the YouTube channel, I should add more tutorials, but <laughs> yeah, it's a lot but yeah I do have one. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to do a giveaway. And so for the giveaway, what I want you to do is just kind of comment and let us know what is your favorite tiny modernist pattern? What tiny modernist patterns have you stitched? And then what, you know, if you have any ideas for Cheryl for the future, so she can read those comments. And um, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, well, it was a real pleasure. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm happy I was able to show everything and talk to people and kind of interact with, uh, with people on your stream. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>